The Budget Office of the Federation says Nigeria now has a limited borrowing space due to its poor debt to revenue ratio, stressing that trouble looms for the country if it exceeds its limits. The Director General of the Budget Office, Ben Akabwezi, while addressing members elect of the 10th National Assembly, pointed out that while Nigeria remains healthy with its debt to GDP ratio, the country is not with its debt to revenue ratio. Akabwezi was speaking to the newly elected and returning members of the National Assembly, which is responsible for the consideration, amendment, and passage of annual budget of the federal government, as well as economic bills like the finance bill. We're now being joined by two guests, our special friends on PLUS TV News. We have an economist, Mr. Shegun Chopiton, and we also have Mr. Akwaga from the Budget Office. A very warm welcome to both of you, gentlemen. Thanks for having me. Good evening. Okay, so I'll Thank start you with... That's right. I'll start with you, Mr. Chopiton. Um, growth rate is obviously, obviously affected by debt burden, and it is in the government's, uh, in the people's interest, and also the government's interest to ensure that debt burden are not on the people. But again, if we look at statistics, as at uh, quarter three, I'm reading now, of 2022, Nigeria's debt profile external and internal, rose to 44.06 trillion naira. I hope I'm correct with this figure. Yeah, 44.06 trillion naira. And the Debt Management Office uh, said that the incoming government of the president-elect Bola Tinubu will inherit a public debt of 77 trillion naira if 23 trillion naira loan from the CBN is not securized. A trader at the market there, a layman, wants to understand these realities. Well, um, the, the securitization of the debt, I think, is very important um, because that will take it from the realm of illegality and uh, place it well within um, uh, uh, standard practice with debt management across the world. So what has been happening with that securitization, if you add the ways and means uh, loans that the federal government has been using to fund its de deficits uh, with the help of the central bank, if you add that figure to the 44 million, uh, 44 trillion naira that you spoke about, then you get, you know, the 77 trillion naira uh, overall debt profile. Um, the ways and means that it stands now is illegal. Um, the government has broken all rules um, and laws regarding how the ways and means is meant to be used to finance uh, budget deficits. And what they are trying to do now is to basically legalize it by securitizing it. Now, what do you mean by securitization? They are simply going to take that loan, convert it to debt instruments that can be traded on, you know, on, this, on the capital market or the money market, as the case may be. Um, and in so doing, uh, hopefully free up some funds for the central bank um, to then continue to use to manage the economy. So that's, that's as far as that is concerned. The second part of your question, um, you know, the, our debt to GDP ratio is, you know, not terrible. It's in the realm of about 27, 30%. Um, we have countries like Japan running at 227% uh, of debt to their overall GDP. Countries like the United States, well over 100% uh, debt to GDP. But those countries also have um, um, revenue to tax revenue to GDP ratios in the region of about 30% to 40% as the case may be. Um, in Nigeria's case, however, yes, our debt to GDP ratio is low, relatively, comparatively, but our revenue to GDP ratio is far lower comparatively. We, run, uh, we currently have a revenue to, to GDP ratio for around 3.7% the lowest in the world, with the exception of two countries that are at war, and with the exception of four countries that are oil-producing countries who do not take taxes from their citizens. So technically, our revenue-to-GDP ratio is the lowest in the world, and that is what we need to keep an eye on 
in this conversation around debt. We are simply, as a country, and our government is simply not generating enough revenues to, to justify the reliance, the heavy reliance on debt to finance budget deficits. We've got to become far more creative with how we go about you know, managing our need for funding these deficits and our need for funding infrastructure as we've seen this outgoing government do over the last eight years. I turn to you, Mr. Vayala Kwaga. You're a senior researcher and a policy analyst at the Budget uh, Foundation. And if we look at what the Budget Office has said already, just as Mr. Shokwito has just explained, it, it says Nigeria's expenditure juxtaposed with the GD, GDP ratio is low at 15%. And, you know, compared to major African nations like South Africa that has it at 30%, you have Morocco at 40%, that's according to data. Now, going back to realities of these figures on the Nigerian community, what's your take? Thanks, uh, Loretta, for that question. And... You know, the problem, just like Mr. Chopiton had said, is that the economy is not as productive as it should be. Yes, we are still within standard limits. I think the World Bank prescribes about a 40% ratio uh, between a debt to GDP. And, you know, that's fine. But I think the important things we need to look at, because we must question if Nigeria is even industrializing at a rate that it should. But what is the government doing with its finances? How is it managing its revenues? How is it making use of expenditure? And what has that, what has the difference between its revenues and expenditures been like for a particular period of time? And what can we hope to see in the future? I think the more important question should be, what is our debt service you know, to revenue ratio? Which, by the way, you know, the Minister for Finance sometime last year promised to bring it down from around 80% to around 60%. Well, it moved, you know, to around 96%, you know, uh, as at the first quarter of this year. That's debt service to revenue. And I think that's a very, very worrying statistic because it has far reaching implications for government earnings. With the little that the government is earning in terms of revenue, you know, it, it's dedicating more and more of that to servicing debt. And it's not clear, I mean, it's obvious rather, that the monies being used for infrastructure, for government spending, are actually being used to make government revenues or to increase government revenues as they should. So the question then becomes, so what are these monies being used for? And, you know, it would be safe to say that your guess is as good as mine. The monies are not being used productively in an economy that is not absorbing these funds for whatever reason, you know, uh, that they have in some way even worsened the situation economically. And CBN uh, recently mentioned that the government has not been able to account for the 23 trillion naira loan it received from it. And that takes me to the fresh loan that the president has written to the National Assembly for approval, about $800 million to feed the poor. Are you with me on this? Yes, so I mean, this, this still goes back to the issue of the, the policy stance and policy position of the government. Simple analysis has shown, and my organization, we, we do this very regularly, serious increases in capital expenditure and recurrent expenditure. And by increases, I mean recurrent expenditure has been increasing, while capital expenditure has been increasing, but at a much slower rate. So the very sectors where the government ought to have been making productive investments that it can supervise, it has not. Rather, it has you know, for one reason or the other, been paying more of salaries and overheads. Uh, the uh, DG of the Budget Office is, has been quoted to have said many times that, you know, Nigeria's public spending is one of the smallest in the world. 
And, you know, there has been some research by some uh, practitioners, you know, to the effect that Nigeria's public service is actually very small. I think those things are true, but they must be looked at within Nigeria's specific context. What is the level or what is the efficiency of government spending in the first place? Until we can answer that question honestly, the, the claim or the defense that Nigeria's spending is not enough compared to its size or Nigeria's public service is very small, I think are moot points and really sidestep the issue about the, the problems of corruption, the mismanagement, the loopholes that exist you know, in, in, in the federal government's management of the public financial system. You know, going to the point you made about the central bank, uh, 23 trillion narrow ways and means. Yes, so this is money that had been given to the federal government over a period of nearly 10 years. Uh, before uh, uh, Buhari came in, it had been in the low 100 millions. But after he came in and is about to leave, it's running into the tens of trillions. So the CBN now has that money on its balance sheet as a negative. It came into the federal government's or the executive's hand as revenue, but it's going to read as a, a as, as an expenditure on the balance sheet of the CBN, which, by the way, does not make most of its books public, even though in many ways and by many definitions, it's a, it's a state-owned enterprise. But we do not get to see the balance sheets of the central bank. So how do we know when the central bank is doing well fiscally and financially? You know? So these really are the, are the questions that I think are on the minds and the lips of practitioners and observers and even the international community. Uh, yes, Mr. Chopin said that, you know, the securitization of that uh, money is actually a good move, and I agree. Uh, however, will the securitization lead to improvements in the economy if it is sold, you know, in the domestic capital markets? That, that only remains to be seen. But it's something, it's a headache, I guess, that the new government will have to take on it all for. Mr. Chopin. Yes, Mr. Shopiton, are you still with us there? Yes, 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 I'm here. The Budget Office says the country is an oil-rich con economy, not a rich economy. You want to break that down? Well, I mean, look, saying that we are an oil-rich economy is even, it's, it's, I think it's a subjective statement to make. Um, uh, what, whatever you want to, describing riches um, in absolute terms might be deceptive and might, might be misleading. Um, we have large oil deposits, yes, compared to some other parts, some other countries across the world, you know, you could say that our oil deposits are significant. But then when you equate that to two factors, one, our production capacity, um, then you begin to ask questions as to how rich exactly are we. And when you then equate that with the revenues that we generate from that oil, compared to our population size, then you realize that we are not oil rich. We are not rich at anything. Our revenue, our GDP per capita as we speak today, is you know, below $3,000, depending on which version of the GDP you want to use, whether you want to look at the PPP, GDP, or nominal or real GDP, we are we're trending below $3,000 per capita. So the word rich should not be used within in any context as far as Nigeria is concerned. We have fundamental deep-rooted problems with our economy. We need to grow our GDP um, exponentially in a very, very short period of time. And the things that our government um, officials, the policies that our government have been executing or implementing over the last 20 years is clearly not working in this regard. We're clearly not growing at the rate that we need to be growing to, to reverse the poverty problem that we have as a country because you, you may think that Nigeria is a rich country, but when you look at the population that the country has to feed, when you look at the development needs that the country has, when you look at things like the infrastructure deficit that is running into tens of billions of dollars, you know, then you cannot say we're rich. We need, our population is growing at roughly around 3% per annum. Our GDP is, has, in the last 10 years, averaged below that, that, which means that our GDP is simply not growing at the same rate as our population. 
which creates a significant problem going into the future for us. For us to say that we're a rich country, we need to be talking about a GDP growth rate, growth, growth rate of around 10%, which would be three times your population growth rate, which would then mean that in a 10-year period or in a 20-year period, then you could have a situation where your the majority of your citizens are living well above the you know the poverty line, and you can say that you are beginning to transform into a prosperous nation. So I don't understand you know the reference to our being oil rich when you know those riches are not translating to development that the, the man on the street can feel and can touch until we we have a situation where our citizens can enjoy you know a high quality of life and a sense of well-being as a result of the status of their country, we cannot call ourselves oil-rich or rich in any manner. So, Peter, Mr. Kaga, your last words on this. Um, light at the end of the tunnel, there's an incoming government already. Um, it's just a few days to the transition. Yeah, I mean, I think there is definitely some light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, a large population can be a scary thing, but it's also a potential for a large market and possibly a large tax base. But, you know, these must be looked at vis-a-vis -vis the productivity and the income levels of this population. Uh, if the incoming government really wants to make some quick wins, they must look at how they can ramp up oil production and at least take Nigeria back to where it was two years ago, at the very least three years ago, when we're doing more, at least I think 1.3 or 1.4 million barrels per day. And then of course, improve the doing business environment to ensure that you know, manufacturers and exporters can actually take their goods and export them and distribute them within the country uh -huh. so that trade can improve, you know, along with the various monetary interventions uh -huh. that a perhaps reconstituted CBN would have to look at and a harmonization as well of fiscal and monetary policy, which to a very large extent uh, during Buhari's uh, term or terms has been very haphazard and has been working at cross purposes. Uh -huh. uh, quite recently, I, I saw in the news that the federal government was thinking of increasing uh, tax rates and I think that may not be the right way to go. You are taxing an already impoverished Nigeria, which would further cause more problems for citizens and their livelihoods. Thank uh, you. Finally, uh, before I end, I would like to say that subsidy removal should be a centerpiece for this incoming administration because it's becoming far too expensive. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Vawala Akwaga, a senior researcher and policy analyst at the Budget Foundation, and Mr. Shegun Shopiton, an economist. Thank you, gentlemen, for being part of the news tonight. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.